This is Fighter Town, USA, the Naval Air Training Station for Pacific Fleet Fighters at Miramar, California. And for the past 15 to 20 years, the home of Phantoms, Skyhawks, and Crusaders. In this mixed population, some of which are still in the front line in the fleet defense, you can't find one aircraft that was not designed in the 50s. Rolled off the production line in the late 50s and 60s, yet serves a practical purpose here in the 70s. There's something to be said for this kind of longevity, about American know-how, and about men trained to fly in combat. Exposed to the realities of air warfare in Vietnam, many of these men are professional sticks with experience that comes only in a shooting war. Now they're back where it all began, to get rung out in a fighter that's unlike anything they've ever flown before. The F-14 Tomcat. And to test what they learn in simulated air combat maneuvers against other high-performance fighters. Responding directly to combat lessons learned in Southeast Asia, the F-14 was designed to counter the growing threat of improved enemy aircraft and missiles launched from sea and air. It combines long-range fleet defense with the close-in maneuverability of dogfighting without compromising basic mission performance. The average pilot weaned on F-4s and F-5s is not easily convinced, however, that the F-14 can really do all that the tactic syllabus says. It takes a building of confidence in the overall performance of the F-14 and the pilot's ability to handle it. To begin with, there's getting used to a cockpit with lots of elbow room for a change. Getting the feel of a flight control system and surfaces that move in unconventional ways and learning all about the effectiveness of a variable wing for tight turns over a wide speed range. Added to this is the AUG-9 weapon control system with long-range radar for early target detection, acquisition, and tracking beyond 100 miles, allowing the F-14 pilot to get the jump on the other guy or to avoid engagement. The choice is his. A multiple weapon system includes six Phoenix missiles, which can be launched simultaneously at targets more than 50 miles away. Then there's working as a two-man crew, dividing responsibilities that range from visual tracking and navigation to kill assessment in a tough ECM environment, with a computer to help the NFO process over 20 targets at the same time. Learning about the F-14 and how to take advantage of its performance capabilities is a full-time job. Every working day, a routine of briefings and flying, flying and debriefings. Beginnings before dawn and endings just short of midnight blur one day into the next. Soon enough, it's time to fight. Pilots new to the F-14 against tough gunfighters flying F-4s, A-4s, and T-38s. With the exception of the F-4, these are short-legged defensive fighters, yet all have a key place in the training environment because of their maneuvering capabilities. Many, like the Mongoose and F-5, have been souped up to closely simulate the performance of defensive enemy-type fighters. That the F-14 can outmaneuver and destroy any of these fighters is certain enough. But the pilot has to find out for himself. And dogfighting is one way to do it. Although only part of the F-14's overall capability, it's a good measure of the aircraft's performance under one of the most demanding fighting conditions a pilot is likely to face. The F-14 versus the T-38 is a lesson in defensive maneuvering. The T-38 being one of the tightest turning aircraft in the inventory.
The test is a critical one. The F-14, in the most vulnerable position of all, his adversary directly behind him in shooting position. Once the T-38 starts to make the attack on you, the first thing you have to do is negate it. And the best way to do that is to break into him. You've got G available, so start your break. Okay, now we want to go from this defensive position into a neutral and an offensive position. The way we can do this with the F-14 is we can pick its nose up. So we're sitting there, as we start to have the overshoot and going in here, we'll flop the wings level and we'll take the airplane up into the vertical. The NFO instructor, who is riding in the back seat of the F-14 during this simulated air battle, is a busy guy. He conducts some of the briefings, sets up the rules of engagement, and later he'll help in the debriefing. Knowing the F-14 and the T-38 like the back of his hand, he'll recognize immediately when the trainee should make his move, when he should get out of the way. And if he hesitates for even a second, he'll know that too. At that point, I'll be calling for you to level your wings to get them level prior to pulling the aircraft up in the vertical. You want to make sure you get in pure vertical if necessary to look inside. At that point, I will be having my eyes on the T-38 during the whole maneuver, so you don't need to worry too much about keeping inside them. Is there any chance the T-38 can uh, outzoom me up there no. and get me back? No, no way. As long as you get your burners lit in here and get your nose into the vertical, the T-38 just can't climb up. The more he tries to come up with you, the more he's going to load that wing up. And as you can see, that wing is much less than yours, so he's going to lose a lot more energy. Therefore, he isn't going to be able to sustain up into the zone. Okay, is, is there any way he can really counter that, or is he just going to end up in the same place every time? No. The less that he counters, or the more dynamic that he counters, not coming up with you, the faster you're going to go after his wing line, the faster you're going to be able to place your nose behind him, and the faster you're going to be able to employ your weapon system. You have gone from the complete defensive to an offensive position. And that's what we're trying to look for. From the classroom to the real world of air combat maneuvering, and back to the classroom, where the instructor who flew the T-38 conducts the debriefing. I was sitting there at 15,000 feet, and you were coming around about 1,000 feet lower than that on my port side. As you came around, as most times when you pass a bogey like this, uh, with an airplane that's superior turning capability that you've got compared to the T-38, we'll always cut across your tail, trying to keep you in sight, making you turn the long way, this way. And then you started your nose pitch up and went a long way around. Now, what happened there is uh, when you went across my tail, I, I lost sight of you. Denny had sight of you, and uh, I spent qu quite a bit of time. And I think I arced probably up there when I was trying yeah, to That's just about what it looked like, because as you came by down low, with your nose back down, re-accelerating, you had a terribly good early turn opportunity that the F-14 has. If you had the opportunity to pick me up immediately out of that turn, you could have gained a lot of angles. I was spending maybe too much time looking for you, not enough time driving the airplane. That's a possibility. You can definitely see the responsibility changes here as you pass. Communicate in the cockpit and let Denny pick up the padlock for you as you come back over the top until you can get your head spun around and get back inside of that bogey as he comes down low. I really found out because F-14's turn here, Bill, we stayed pretty close and that's not that much problem. I thought it'd be a big problem, but it wasn't. Encouraged by their success against the nimble T-38, F-14 flight crews are no less attentive in preparing for their next battle. Against the A-4, another good turning, low wing loaded fighter. In this engagement, the tactics instructor will also double as pilot for the A-4. Again, the F-14 is on the defensive, the A-4 rolling from a high perch into a good gun position. Once I start to make my attack, you're going to have to counter that. And the way you do that is you start your nose up, get yourself going right up into the vertical, making sure you get your afterburners lit and start going up. Lyle's going to coach you into where I am. Once you're up in here, start to do your displacement roll towards my 6 o'clock. sitting in there in a position like this. So then what I'll have to do is I'll have to counter that, making sure you get your burners out right up in here. Now, once you have those out, start your attack. Try to make a kill on me. Once that I'm sitting there, I'll have to counter that. I'll have to bring the nose up, get up in there. Once you see that you can't make the attack, bring yourself right up into the vertical again, and then this is where you're going to really make your money. You're going to be back up over top of me. I will be out of energy. I'll have to bring my nose down. So if you're coming over the top, you'll have a good position to start making the kill.
After the engagement, both crews return to the base for debriefing. At this stage, debriefing is often a matter of reminding F-14 pilots of the extended capabilities of their aircraft, to instill more confidence that you can push it beyond the limits of other fighters, and that it will respond. The first thing I saw is that we started the maneuver, I came up over the top of you like this, I had really was impressed with the way that you brought your nose up. It really surprised me. I didn't I didn't think you could get that kind of pitch right out of the airplane. Oh boy, you really bet. surprised me right you there. You bet. You can get yourself right up over the top of that guy. Once you're up in here, now you're in a position where I'm starting downhill, you can start to attack. And then I started to come back on up in there. You saw that. You came off in a nice little lag position like that. I kind of felt you may have had a little uh, coaching from the back seat or something there. Yeah, quite a bit. I could feel it coming off. I saw you in a position where I said, well, I could almost maybe try to reverse, but no, I could see you started back on up, and then it's just straight standby to look in my mirrors. I had you picked up, you came right back down into the gun kill, and that's the name of the game. I felt like uh, the trouble, if I had the troubles, was early in the early in the hop where I was I was uh, getting a little bit greedy, putting the nose on you when I was still yeah. defensive. You end up getting there where you get to Burnslet, and I think everybody gets so darn odd with the way this thing will start so soaring that they don't get them off by the time they're starting to come back down. And that causes you to start to do your overshoot. Is that about the way you saw it, Hope? Our only real problem, I thought, Keith, was after we uh, came out to the outside, Muller started his nose up and we got on our back up here on top, still in zone five. I thought had you gotten the power off a little bit sooner, we wouldn't have picked up so many knots coming back downhill. Well, this goes back to just what Mahler said in the brief. I didn't come out of zone five coming over the top. Consequently, I got fast because I'm not, I'm not realizing how fast this airplane accelerates. That's exactly what we were talking about. You handle everything right up through here. You're getting up on top, just like we're looking for, back over the top of there. But right in here, you just got to believe it. You got to Two down and one to go. Opposition for the F-14 today is the F-4 Phantom. Both are high thrust to weight fighters. Both have a two-man crew. Unlike the F-14, however, the Phantom has to fight at high speed to be effective, and thus is vulnerable to the tight-turning Tomcat. Both will use radar to find one another, then engage, starting from neutral, head on. The F-14 is the aggressor. Now we sit there and start up into the vertical. Now he's going to make damn sure he's going to come up here with you. If he just sits there, rolls his wings down, and starts running on you or anything like that, straight loud little turn, go on down and chase him. You'll have the energy to go after him. You'll be ready to go. If he picks his nose up, start smiling. You've got a good day ahead of you. How much of its maneuvering potential the pilot extracts from his F-14 will determine his success in this engagement. The trick is to keep his head out of the cockpit, to reduce his reaction time, to fly the airplane instead of watching over it, to spend less time with the machine, more time with the fight outside. You can be sure the instructor pilot in the F-4 knows what his adversary can do and how he's likely to do it. His job is to stay alive. Having heard it in the classroom, of course, is a lot different from being there. And after you've been there, there's a lot to talk about. Okay, Walt, this is where we picked him up, climbed up to his altitude, closed in, passed him down our left side, just like we briefed, and like we briefed, he zoomed. He peaked out about, uh, about 30,000 feet, and we went up to about 28. But he was out of airspeed, and just like you said, when, or just like we said, when we got his nose coming down predictable, we just put her right on him. And I could not believe how little maneuverability he had left. You know, that you could see the airplane load back up, and you could see him start to get a little bit desperate. He just had nothing left. We just put the nose on him and closed. You know, I thought that uh, the whole engagement was just pretty much cut and dried. It's like Mike drew it out in the blackboard yeah, before sure we went is. out there. Pilots and Navy flight officers continue to cycle through fighter town to get their hands on the F-14 and to put it to the test against the more familiar Mongoose, F-5E, and F-4. And they're impressed. 
we can take more of the classical maneuvers and use them to our advantage. But that, to me, is the biggest thing. In the F-4, there are only one or two ways to win a fight. And if you don't do those one or two ways right and perfect, then you're going to lose. Now, it's not a magic airplane that you give any plumber and say, go out there and pull the thing around, and it'll, it'll do what it needs to do. It just does airplane, things better. You make up for a lot of mistakes and still survive or still get the shot. I've been in several fights one on two where the pilot is called sparrow shots and I've never looked in the cockpit, never looked in the cockpit. I just hit BSL and he's got a lock and he's called a shot because he's got all the information he needs in my heads up display. This building is unbelievably important and I think in this airplane you can see people stay alive. The F-14 just makes it easier, makes it possible to have more good fighter pilots just because the airplane performs so well. It's really amazing that we can just go out there and just take that airplane and say, we're going to do this to you and go out and do it to you. With a confidence in his airplane now born of experience, the pilot can translate F-14 capabilities into real performance. High thrust to weight and effective wing loading means the ability to stand the F-14 on its tail and, in one move, get into a 6 o'clock position. As other potential adversaries come along, F-14 tactics will be modified to handle them. The aircraft's performance flexibility and wide variety of weapons can be adapted to meet any foreseeable threat, to take the fight to the enemy, and to win.